Hello, welcome to Otaku Underground Radio, episode 9. I'm bringing it back, boys. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, for people who don't know what this podcast is, it's basically just me ranting about nerdy, geeky crap. Usually anime or manga related topics, but today we're going to be talking about... Uh, we're gonna in this in this episode we're gonna review season three of the boys, which is probably gonna be spoiler spoiler filled reviews. Uh, sorry, a spoiler filled review, and then we're gonna do a spoiler free review of Stranger Things season four. All right? Um, yeah. But before that, we're gonna just talk about I'm gonna bull crap about a bunch of stuff. I'm talking about like you know, how my week went. And uh, what manga, anime I'm currently reading slash watching, and what games I'm playing, right? There's going to be timestamps in the bottom, right? Yeah, so how... First off, I'm going to talk about how my week went. Uh, my week uh, started off pretty crappy, to be honest. Because uh, if you're if you're sub to this channel, you know, oh, my dog got sick, right? And my dog got sick... Like literally the day after Canada's Day, <laughs> and if you know, if you have a pet, you know how f hard it is. I'm trying not to swear within the first two minutes. How hard it is to get like an appointment around holidays, man. It's like impossible. E either the the host the animal hospitals or vets will take a, you know the holidays off, or like people will book around the holidays, right? So. It was, so like yeah, there was like two like two days where like my dog wouldn't eat or walk, and I had no idea why. It turns like I thought my dog broke her foot, honestly, because like because you know she had diarrhea that day and she fell in the bathtub while I was washing off the poop off her bum off her bum and hair, and then she fell pretty hard, and I'm like and her foot. You know, she wouldn't walk the rest of the day, so I'm like, oh my god, like, I thought my, my dog broke her foot, and it, like, it got swollen up and everything. Turns out, she got an infection from, a, like, a wooden slither. What the fuck, dude? That was, <laughs> it's like, god damn. And, uh, thankfully, when I eventually did take her to the vet on, like, you know, Monday morning, you know, it wasn't, you know... Uh, it wasn't a big problem. Like they, they said, oh, antibiotics and probiotics and stuff will will help her out. Which you know, on day one, she took the medicine no problem because you know the painkillers and stuff r really helped her. On day two, she didn't want anything. <laughs> it, it right. I had to uh, come up with the strategy of like holding back her food. So when it was time to give her her medicine. Then you get, uh, then you give her food, right? So, uh, because if she's hungry, she's more likely to eat the medicine when she's, when she's like you know has food in her her tummy. Like, oh no, I might eat that. It could be poison or whatever. It's like, god damn it, dog. Uh, so that was, yeah. So people were probably thinking with all my posts and stuff, I was making a big deal out of nothing, which I, I, that's what it looked like happened but you know at the time I didn't know what the hell was wrong with my dog right so yeah that's why I made a big deal out of it uh, I'm drinking like uh, Dr. Pepper right now uh, so yeah that was super stressful uh, other than that my week was fine until Friday where I guess throughout the country uh Nobody could use their debit cards or fucking phone or internet. So like all day, my, I had no internet. <laughs> internet, and so I was like, "Oh, sc screw this! I'm gonna start um, binge watching the anime I'm supposed to be reviewing, which only one person voted." Uh, but guess what? The uh, the my next anime review is locked in. It's gonna be the melancholy. Of Haruhi Suzumiya, which I watched the first 14 episodes of this series, right? Um, and uh, apparently, they on the my on this DVD, the show was originally uh, the episodes were out of order, 
on the DVD that I got, they they put they put it on the rebroadcast order uh, from 2009. Yeah, because the the when you watch this show back in the day, you had to like the 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 show for some the the creator who's a fucking madman decided, oh yeah, we're gonna have this show. Uh, uh, an on chronological order, which maybe um, at the time was a good idea, because the show I did get bored like halfway, like halfway through the show. But then again, I, when you watch like you know like six hours of one fucking show, you're probably going to get bored, especially when the show's not a, like the show is basically a soap opera. There's not a lot of action, so I, so I, like, I was like, fuck this, and I wa I put in like, you know, um, uh, DV DVD one of the uh, Bleach and watched the first four episodes. Was watching the first four episodes of Bleach. It's like, man, like Rukia, like my my buddy um, Kevin Street is doing is reviewing the show, and he he was talking about how like oh like um, Byakuya Kuchki. Uh, like you know, hold held like Rukia's career back that kept her from becoming a lieutenant and or captain. It's like watching the first four episodes. No way, fucking Rukia could become a fucking like you know a lieutenant. Much less. Then again, her squad is one of the weakest squads. The captain is pretty badass, but the squad is pretty weak. But yeah, but yeah, man, she was like. She she got fucking bodied by a fucking like uh, by a fucking hollow man like <laughs> by a fucking hollow like a weak hollow at that man like goddamn uh yeah it's funny though rewatching Bleach after watching uh, Inuyasha and Yu Yu Hakusho you can definitely see the um, people like to compare Bleach to Yu Yu Hakusho but after rewatching it yeah you can. You could definitely see, like, oh yeah, he was also probably inspired by Inuyasha, right? Uh, I could be wrong on that, but, like, given, like, you know, the big sword and the the robes and everything, yeah, you could definitely see Inuyasha uh, vibes, which, man, I want to rewatch Inuyasha, but it's so fucking long of a series. It's like, god damn. I don't even know if I have all the seasons. I have, I think I have, like, the first three or four seasons on DVD. Alright. And, and then you have the fucking final years. Oh my god. I heard they brought back the original English dub voice actors. But. Uh, so. Yeah. I, one day I, I'm going to watch. I'm going to binge watch in Yasha. But yeah. Yeah. So like my Haruhi Suzumiya review should be coming out. Either next week or the week after. But I don't think it's going to take too long. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, Kazuyuki Takahashi, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, died on July 6th, apparently, of a diving accident at 60 years old. Which, man, holy crap! For him to die, like, at least it wasn't a suicide, because people were like, "Oh, he pr maybe he died of a suicide." It's like uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh, the Yu-Gi-Oh creator dying of suicide? No way! But yeah, like he. He, yeah, he apparently died of a diving accident, and I feel like such an asshole because that that night I was like reminiscing over the death of um, of Kentaro Mira. Like I was listening to Viper the Rapper's like uh, like tribute song that some fan pay pig of his had him make. Which, the music video, it sucks, but you know, it's good <laughs> at the same time. Because it's just Viper rapping over uh, one of the uh, songs from, like, um, fr from the the sad, the s gut sad theme from, like, you know, um, uh, from the Berserk OST. But, like, I don't know, man. Like, it's it just, like, you feel the feels, man. You feel the feels. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not like you know. I it's sad that like Kazuki Takahashi uh, uh, died, but at the same time, like um, I'm not. It's a thing where like I'm sorry that I'm not as broken up about it as I was, you know, when Kentaro Mira died because Yu-Gi-Oh, honest, honestly, is. Uh, 
is like a kid's thing, and I, I kind of grown up from that, but it's still sad that, you know, Ka Kazuki Takahashi died. But, you know, he he died probably wealthy, right? And he was probably enjoying life. Uh, it is sad that he died at 60 years old. Um, but, yeah, it's... He probably enjoyed... He was wealthy. As far as I know, he was wealthy. And he probably enjoyed life to the fullest. Full, 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 full and, you know, the guy got to... Uh, the guy was a huge comic book fan. And he got to make, uh, like, a Spider-Man manga. So he, he probably... You know, that was probably on his bucket list. To do something like American Comics-esque. So, that, yeah. That's all I gotta say. Uh, on the subject, but yeah, besides from watching Haru Suzumiya and uh, episodes of Bleach, I'm a I also started. I'm also reading Kagen o Omega, the sequel to Kagen Ashura, and boy, do I have a lot to say about that uh, manga. But I'm gonna try to keep it short. Uh, I just find it funny that I I will admit that the manga is not as great as you know it's started off as but i just find it like fucking like dumb that people are complaining about um like the main the main character the white haired dude whose name i for who escapes me because he gets so much fucking little screen time when he's the the, the fucking main character of the manga and he kind of got you had like a gundam c destiny thing going on where like the old, you had this long ass arc, where the where like you know the old characters kind of took over the show. We're finally getting the main character of the manga get the the limelight, and then people are pitching because he that he got uh, too strong too fast. He's basically on the level uh, uh, of like of like a moderate like you know. Um, Kenken match fighter and people are bitching. He oh he got strong too fast, motherfucker. It's been what like it feels like it's been like two fucking years. <laughs> he's been a noob and now he's finally uh, getting. We're finally getting to see him fight in some matches, man. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I I will I do agree that like oh they they it did feel like they powered down some of the other fighters, but like. But like nobody bitch, nobody bitches about like you know how like OP um, the the uh, Tokita Oma has gone and now that he uh, off screen he's now he's now like the best fighter in the in the fucking manga when before he was he was in the top ten maybe top five now he's considered the best fighter on the fucking manga and from off-screen training and nobody nobody is bitching about that but everybody's bitching all oh, like the main character of the show has actually gone stronger that is fucking retarded dude i don't give a fuck and if you're if anybody's wondering okay when is the co-host going coming on there are no fucking co-hosts <laughs> bitch this is a solo show uh, maybe one day I will get uh, a co-host, but if I do, it's going to be somebody local. It's not going to be somebody over the internet because we're, we're trying to keep this show low tech <laughs> to low tech to like, you know, uh, filter out uh, casuals. We're trying to keep this in underground. There's a reason underground is in the title of this podcast because we're trying to keep this casual fucking free man get the fucking like you know get the fucking noobs and the the filthy casuals off this fucking uh, manga uh this uh podcast which i'm i'm also surprised that anime snob didn't make a video making fun of the Yu-Gi-Oh fans for their creator dying when he he was fucking ruthless when the berserker mangaka died he pretty much said the same thing that richard c meyer said when like you know um when um when the kentaro mira died which that oh it's actually a good thing because which uh, on the subject of berserk i uh, i do not give a fuck 
that they're continuing the manga. I think they're doing a disservice to Mira. I don't give a fuck what fake-ass Berserk fans say. I don't give a shit that they're getting assistance to continue the show, the manga. Fuck that shit. They, it sh they should never have continued it. Or if they did, they should have gotten, like, another famous mangaka. Don't fucking bring in the assistants who couldn't even create their own fucking mangas. I, I don't care if the art is as good as Mira. They're not going to have the imagination of Mira. And they're not going to have the level of writing. It's basically, the, it's basically going to be fan fiction from now on. Okay? I don't give a fuck. What fucking shit was left behind, right? It's going to be fan fiction, all right? They should have just continued the anime and let the anime writers make their own fucking ending. Because there have been times where the anime, where animes have been better than the manga. Like fucking Full Metal Alchemist. Full Ma the original Full Metal Alchemist's ending is a million times better than Brotherhood. I don't give a fuck when anybody says. Fucking Full Metal Alchemist had this Avon end of Evangelion levels of ending, whereas fucking for what is supposed to be a dark show, whereas the fucking Brotherhood had this like. A happy ending where everybody got what where Edward got everything he wanted. He, his brother got a new body. He got his limbs back. He married fucking Wendy. That is fucking bullshit, dude. That ending is fucking garbage. Right? If you like it, that's fine. But it does not fucking fit with the tone of this series. Where it was... Right? Where, like, the whole point of, like, Full Metal Alchemist is that... You know, science, alchemy isn't magic, it's a science. You, you can't get, you can't get, like, everything you want. It's not magic, you know. There's a cost for everything, right? You had, like, you know, fucking Edward sacrificing himself so he could bring his bro brother's body back. And ending up in pre-World War II <laughs> Germany as the, uh... World War II is about to happen was like a perfect fucking ending, man. Dude. And they fucking ruined it in the fucking uh, manga, right? I'm drinking soda. I, I just got back from walking my dog, so I'm a little thirsty. And like, soda just makes you more thirsty. <laughs> so it's, like, it's not helping, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm so we went on a fucking wild tangent. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Berserk to me, Berserk is dead. I don't give a fuck. Um, hopefully this as bad as the CGI is in the CGI cartoon, sorry, anime is. I rather see a continuation of that and them finish and them finish the fucking show than like you know. Uh, the story Berserk than whatever the manga does. Because the one thing that Berserk was good is, is that it was unpredictable. Like, I had reading it for years when I find when I found out that, like, you know because, uh, you know, I took a break from reading Berserk um, to find out what made me reread Berserk was I found out that the show took this fucking wild fucking left turn where it turned into like this dark, but they, it went from dark, ultra grim dark fantasy horror epic to it went, it took a le left turn into becoming this almost heroic fantasy where Guts like teams up with a witch, like, and like a couple of knights. And this spoiled fucking uh, noble's daughter. <laughs> like, it took a, a fucking crazy wild left turn, man. And you're not going to get any crazy left turns from, like, you know, um, from, like, you know, people taking over the, the show. Especially from assistants. They're basically going to do everything the fans were hoping to happen. Right? And it's, it's going to... 
You, you'll, you'll, I, th this is my prediction on Berserk's ending. People will enjoy it at first, but then over the years get disappointed because of how predictable the ending was and that they didn't really, like, because, like, you know, Mira, everybody thought that Mira would probably have, you know, if he had finished it, it would probably have a dark ending. Where, like, you know, most of the characters, including Guts, probably Casca, would have died, right? And, like, you know, and, like, you know, uh, Griffith would have had, like, this semi, like, you know, uh, victory. He probably wouldn't have gotten everything he wanted, but he probably would have won. And, like, you know, uh, Mira probably would have had the Moonlight Child carry on, like, the battle f of his parents, right? And that's probably how... It like the 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 world would have been completely fucked, overrun by apostles and demons and shit, with humans on the verge of extinction, and you would have had like the moonlight ch moonlight kid, uh, moonlight child, the you know the the half breed or whatever of like uh, half demon or half whatever of uh, Griffith, uh, sorry guts and like Casca's kid probably taking on the the fight. Uh, of the his dead parents, right against Griffith. That's probably what what that's what my head canon thinks might have happened with the ending of Berserk, but who knows, right? Uh, but that's what I thought would have happened. But you, th there was definitely supposed to probably have been some like ultra dark ending where like most of the characters would have died, uh, would have died, but there would have been a slight chance for hope because the. A lot of the great endings tend to be like half full endings where like you know like with end of evangelion full male alchemist um you know trying to think like naruto's ending even though kind of i kind of hate how like you know um the princess kaguya fucking uh, bitch from the moon uh, i did like kind of like oh yeah you had like you know b both naruto and like sasuke both lost an arm though I, I that's not how i thought like naruto would have ended i thought naruto would have ended with you know basically like a history repeats itself kind of thing where naruto eventually became you know um hokage but you would have had a thing where, like, you know, he would have had this death bat. He would have became Hokage, but he probably would have been killed uh, in, like, a final battle with Sasuke. Where he was kind of repeating the, uh, kind of repeating the battle between ha uh, ha Hashirama and uh, Madara, right? Which, you know, in the final, in, like, the finale of Naruto... Not, not, not Shupiden, but Naruto, back when, like, Naruto and Sasuke were getting, you have the, this epic fight they're having in, in the whatever valley, and you have, like, the two giant statues of Madara and Hashirama, and, like, you see Naruto's on one side, and, like, you know, Sasuke's, like, they're under the, but they're both under the shadow of the two, like, statues. I thought, like, oh, I, I you know, that would have been a predictable ending, but, like, you know, that would have been, like, an awesome, you know, glass half full end ending, right? But, yeah, like, nowadays people fucking, anime fans are pussies and need to have happy endings. Like, what's the fucking, uh, part, uh, 3.3? Why couldn't they just call it part 4? Like, 2, like, 2 point, uh, 4 point 4. Like, oh, god damn it. With uh, that Evangelion movie, which I liked at first, but then like, ah, uh, this is kind of like a bullshit. <laughs> uh, that that that's the fucking thing, cause like, cause they kind of did end of Evangelion at the end of the second fucking film, right? So I don't know, whatever. Yeah, so we'll probably we'll let's um. Let's skip to uh, our Stranger Things season four review, and then we'll we'll finish the show with the my my thoughts on season three of the boys. Which is, this is going to be fucking hard to review and talk about because usually when I review shit, 
I binge watch it and then I talk about while well, everything is still fresh. Uh, you know, th- this, like, you know, Stranger Things, you know, the first half, which, like, the first seven episodes aired in June, right? And then they aired the last two episodes, which I think each episode, like, of the last two episodes were, like, what, two hours each? On, like, July 1st on Canada's Day, which meant I couldn't watch it. (laughs) So I was fucking worried about fucking spoilers, which is, there wasn't much to spoil, to be honest. (laughs) So, yeah, what did I, so what what happened uh, on season four, right? Which, uh, I'm gonna briefly re, um... Recap my thoughts on like not thoughts, but my feelings on seasons one through three. Uh, season one was great. Uh, I loved it. You know, you had the Stephen King like meets like Spielberg kind of thing going on. It was great. Eighties nostalgia, blah blah blah. Great season one. Season two was fucking uh, woke garbage. And like you, you can tell because people for people who don't know. Uh, the Duffer Brothers apparently wanted Stranger Things to be basically another American Horror Story, which each season would be a standalone series, but with like similar themes, right? So like each season was supposed to be like a fucking you know a super na- like a horror mystery show basically, right? Um. And but the, because of the success of Stranger Things, um, they they were told by fucking Netflix or whatever, hey, continue the story. So season two, they had no idea what the fuck they were doing. Season two was fucking awful. Season three, even though a lot of people hate it, I personally enjoyed it. Right? Uh, I liked the new. I liked the Maya Hawk character Robin, even though I hated the twist. They had where oh she's a lesbian and she hates Steve Harrington because Steve Harrington cucked her, right? <laughs> which you know, which is uh, what the fuck, man? They would make you know I would uh, I would they would make you know, Steve and like Robin would make a fucking great couple, man. But they have to be woke and bullshit, right? And uh, now let's talk about season four. Season four. Started off great. I didn't mind that they they did like the, all like the teen drama bullshit, where you had like Eleven was getting bullied at like school, and when Mike Mike went to visit her, she wanted you know she 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 basically wanted to pretend like you know like oh like everything's going great and she's not getting bullied, which uh, we we know what happens there. Which you you have the thing where like oh she's living with the the buyer's family, um, which the buyer's family. Uh, the show also starts off with this like very like they're they're like they're like stealing they they stole a lot from Nightmare on Elm Street, which the point where they have like um, they have the actor who played Freddy Krueger. I forget his Robert England. Uh, play a character in the in the the show, which I I kind I love that sh- uh, the the that shit where like oh you have this new villain, right? Uh, this new villain, right? And he like he's mysterious. We don't know anything about him, but eventually we get a reveal that all oh, you know it's connected to you know what, right? Um, yeah, the ups, not just the upside down, but you know, whatever. I'm not gonna spoil that, right? Uh, but I kind of, I was not a fan of the fucking. Uh, they, they all, they had because uh, I don't know. I guess the they start, they had the whole satanic panic thing going on, right? Because you know the fucking, which you kind of brought it onto yourselves, right? <laughs> With all you named your D and D. Uh, your D and D club, Hellfire Club, which no fucking, which is I I think is supposed to be a reference to X Men, because you know, because they, they they established all oh, these guys are fan are ex fans of X Men comics. When though X Men con though the original Hellfire Club 
was a reference to an actual like de uh, actual British like like satanic occult cl uh, club. So it's like, dude, like you're trying to be like anti satanic panic when you 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 named your D and D club after like. Uh, unbeknownst to you, an actual like satanic occult club, <laughs> which you know, um, it's funny that it, it's just that there's no way no high school would allow, hey, especially in the 80s, allow like you know, um, kids to name their D and D club Hellfire Club, even if it was an unofficial like club, right? Because like yeah, like. Because uh, I've heard, I've listened to podcasts where like people, where D and D people like talked about like uh, having to deal with the satanic bullshit, and they they weren't allowed to like you know have religious references on their posters, especially not in their fucking names, right? Uh, keep in mind this was even in the nineties, right? Even in the nineties, like G Gundam. They had to change the name of G Gundam, uh, the, which the the G Gundam is actually called God Gundam, and they had to change the name from Shining to Burning Gundam. Oh, sorry, Burning Gundam from like you know God Gundam, the Devil. Though I think they kept the Devil Gundam <laughs> name. I could be no, the Devil Gundam was changed to Dark Gundam. But yeah, even in the eighties, that shit. You know, I'm, I I I don't buy that. Oh, they would have been fine with Hellfire Club as a fucking name, right? Uh, but yeah, like the 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 show basically in this uh, season three of sorry season four of Stranger Things you have like basically three uh, plot lines where like uh, you, where um, Joyce and and fucking uh, Brett Gelman, <laughs> which I hate that fucking guy in real life. But as a character in Stranger Things, oh, he's fun, right? Um, they go on a journey to like Russia to free uh, to to f the free a hopper from like a Russian uh, workers' prison with the help of uh, Jagan Hakar from fucking Game of Thrones, who's playing like a Russian like. Uh, prison guard which uh, that was fucking awesome <laughs> he's even his russian accent is the same accent he's he used on fucking game of thrones and i think he's like a danish actor or some fucking shit <laughs> so that was that was actually kind of funny <laughs> like you have jagan hagar's playing like a russian fucking uh prison guard so yeah that they, they uh they have this subplot where like oh joyce joyce and um and uh What's his name? Murphy? I, I can't remember. Brett Gelman's character go to rescue Hopper from like this Russian prison camp where they also have the monsters from the Upside Down, which is the fucking Demi Gorgons or whatever, right? Um, the second subplot is um, uh, Eleven. Well, there's actually four, but whatever. Eleven uh, needs to get her powers back so she can help. Um, help everybody from Hawkins from the new threat, which is Vecna, who's who's going around killing people so he can open up this gateway between the Upside Down and the Earth, right? Where you get you, um, where you get like you know this uh, backstory where like oh you you see what happened to all the different psychic kids from the facility, uh, right and. Uh, you know, and also you have the thing where the Byers brothers and Mike are like, you know, road tripping, trying uh, across America, trying to find like where Eleven is, right? So they can help her, right? Uh, which I really liked uh, the Byers shit, except for they're obviously setting up. They don't, they don't say this, but it's implied that they're setting up that. Will is secretly gay, and he has he has a thing for Mike, which is such bullshit. And it's like, dude, like, uh, like I was an artsy kid in school. I like to draw all the time, right? Does that make me secretly gay? Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> uh so that that I uh, that kind of annoyed me. Oh man, they're doing that shit. And also, you have the third storyline where our. 
our our characters that are still on Hawkins are dealing with the you know the murders. You have the Eddie from the le- leader of Hellfire Club is getting like you know is blamed for murder, and you have like the basketball kids are you know uh, s- s- are doing like mob justice. We're trying to track him down, which I feel bad for Jason, man, because like. From Jason's point of view, Eddie is totally the murderer. Because, <laughs> like, you know, Eddie, like, Jason s- saw his one of his friends get killed in front of fucking Eddie, right? So it, it's a hundred percent logical that, like, oh, that J- Jason would think the Hellfire Club had something to do with the murders, including the murder of Chrissy, his girlfriend, right? But obviously. Oh, he, they have to set him up as the bad guy, right? Which is such fucking bullshit. All right. Um, my, my problem with the show, right, besides from some of the woke crap or whatever, uh, which the visuals and the music, especially like the 80s music, and they have like the synth wave style music, was fucking fantastic. The visuals were great. Um, one problem I had was the climax that they had in episode 7 was a lot better than the climax that happened on episode um, uh, 9 right which I, I I fucking fell asleep watching the climax of episode 9 and I had to rewatch watch it not a lot happened a lot of build up not a lot happened yes you had that awesome guitar solo by Eddie where they basically just <laughs> they basically just played like Metallica the the Metallica song, right? Where you can hear the vocals and drums and everything. Pro- and I kind of get that that would probably be better than just you know Eddie just doing the you know playing the song on the guitar. But it would have been better if you had at least Eddie playing the song on the guitar. And then where the where it would cut to the you know the scenes where like all the other characters going around doing shit. Then you you have the vocals and the drums cut in, but because it, yeah, it's like oh he's playing the some pup uh, master puppets on the guitar, but for some reason it's the it's the whole it's the song by metal it's the song by Metallica including the vocals and shit. It's like fucking retarded, in my opinion. Um, but if I were to rate Stranger Things Season 4, uh, I would say solid 7 out of 10. Way better than, uh, way better than Season 2. Improvement on Season 3, but yeah, man, uh, it kind of, it kind of, it's the thing where, it, the, 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 the climax was kind of like, you know, uh, was a little weak, but overall, I did enjoy the show. I did at first. I was kind of pissed off that they brought back Hopper, because you know his sacrifice at the end of season three was very emotional. Uh, but yeah, I guess seeing like you know the the reunion between like Eleven and Hopper at the end of season of the fin- like the finale, because they don't they don't meet up until like the very end of the show, right? Um, kind of made up for it, but other than that, yeah, see, 7 out of 10, could have been better, but, you know, the fucking, um, it is what it is, um, yeah, that, and they probably should have killed off some of the characters, let's be honest, like, they didn't kill off anybody, <laughs> even, like, fucking Murphy, uh, I, I know, like, uh, one of the characters is crippled, probably for life, uh, but, uh, which, site spoiler, but, like, yeah, they probably should have killed up some of the characters. Okay, come on. All right. So, okay, now we're gonna talk about season three of The Boys, which I only started watching The Boys, uh, like, a mo- I start like, I literally just started watching it this summer. Because <laughs> I was just bored, and, like, uh, fuck it, let me just binge watch, like, season one and two of The Boys. 
which I did a review for season one of The Boys. Only like two people watched it, <laughs> which is why I didn't even fucking bother reviewing season like two. Because people hate season two, which I kind of, I get how they handled the Stormfront character was fucking bullshit. Right? Um, but yeah, so, but th that's the problem. Here, here's the fucking thing about the boys. It's a show that is, it's the thing, the mon, the, I almost said the manga. The graphic novel ha was written around the time of, was written about the time when, um, it was peak ultimate like alt Marvel Ultimate Comics, peak neocon shit was going. America was peak neocon conservative, right? So that, uh, so yeah, it had the, the the show the the graphic novel. In my opinion, was basically from what I've read of it, it is centrist, but with a slight leftist tw tint here. The, the, the show is written, it shows like this neocon world, where, but with, that's the thing, the boys show does, the, the world of the boys doesn't make a lot of fucking sense, because it's like, oh, America's peak neocon, but they have their, they shoehorning in all the divisive radical politics, and it's super like the 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 pe the creator like the the war the bad guys of the show are peak neocon but also are uh, are also progressive and super woke. It makes no fucking sense, right? Uh, and but like the main the main problem with the show is that the show is written by ultra left woke people or at least people who are s signaling to the left. So you're going to have to deal with the woke shit in the show. And it doesn't help that the fucking creator of The Boys is this ultra, ultra god-hating, like, atheist. So he's probably not right-wing either. Even though there are, there are a lot of, like, atheists that are right-wing. Like, I think Bill Williamson, who's like a, you know, he's a conservative. Even though he's like, you know, if you ever read Fables, like, you know, he... You can tell, like, all the guys... The guy's not a huge fan of the god. <laughs> right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, that's the thing where, like... You know, the show is good, but the... It's... You're gonna have to deal with... Um... All, woke bullshit. And the show... Apparently, I've watched, like... Rev like, people talk about this, sh this show and how... Oh, the writers are actually trying to, like, you know, uh, be centrist and failing at it. I'd rather them try to be centrist than just be straight up, we're woke, we don't give a fuck. Like, with the CW shows, with, like, you know, Umbrella Academy, which Umbrella Academy is so bad and so forgettable, after a week of watching season one, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, do a review of it because I just like, dude, it would have only been like two minutes. Uh, the show sucks, right? That, that's it. Like, I, 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 I couldn't do a review for it, man. If I, if I tried, I, I just couldn't. But yeah, um, what did I think? Um, so let's talk about what, okay, what's going on with this season. Which there's gonna be spoilers in this review. And uh, I'm going to rant a lot on the fucking uh, comic, the fake comic fans who constantly spoil shit from the comics when, when like on videos where people are talking about the TV show. Retards! Nobody gives, stop fucking spoiling the comics. Okay, they're obviously, the, t the showrunners are obviously not going to have any of the fucking twists and turns from the fucking comics, okay? It's v very fucking obvious that they're not, that they're not adapting, they're not adapting their fucking comic book. They're just taking characters and shit from the comic book and like create the world the, the the general feel of the world and just making their own fucking thing okay 
Like, when, as soon as it turns out that old Becca and the bastard kid was alive on season two, it was pretty fucking obvious, oh yeah, they're not gonna do any fucking thing from the fucking comics. Any of the twists and turns um, from the comics, they're not gonna do, right? And I, I'm gonna, we're gonna put a pause on this rant because I don't want to spoil, like, you know, the major fucking problem I have with this season. But yeah, this season starts off really fucking good where, um, where, like, you know, at first, you know, you get this bullshit where you think, like, everything's better now. Homelander is depressed because, you know, he's getting sidelined. There, Stan Edgar is setting up for, like, you know, uh, is grooming, like, Starlight. Which, we need to talk about Aaron Moriarty. Like, the chick is, like, the chick is, like, younger. Oh, is the internet down again? Fuck. Okay, no. The chick is only 28 years old, but it looks like she had like a shitload between season two and season and this season. Looks like she had a shitload of surgery. She looks almost fucking 40 in her face. Like there, she did something to her face to try to make herself look younger, and it's super fucking weird because she was super young looking in the previous two seasons. And now she looks like fucking Nicole Kidman. Like, like she did Botox or something to her fucking face, man. And it looks super fucking weird. Yeah, but like, yeah, at first, it, the show looks like, oh, they're going, that they're, um, that's, you know, things are getting be better. The, the, the fucking, the, the fucking Stan Edgar and home, uh, sorry, Starlight is screwing over Homelander. Homelander is super depressed because his rate, his uh, points are going down. He's getting hand jobs from the from fucking uh, Stormfront, even though she's like she's like a cripple now and is like a burned fucking victim. Like she's still like you know he's still going to see her, which is kind of you gotta give props that you know. Uh, he didn't abandon her after she she became super ugly and a cripple. Like he's, he's still getting on with her, right? They they make that's the thing with Homer. They make him out to be like this narcissist sociopath, but he's still like he still has some like you know uh, feelings, right? Like you know he, he still like loves some people, right? So yeah, yeah, you, you have this thing where like yeah, Homer. Uh, yeah, Homelander's on the uh, downward curve. Uh, Butcher and the boys uh, are working for this new department set up by Huey Campbell and like Victoria Newman to police supers, uh, the 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 capes, right? Which it turns out to be bullshit when they finally reveal. Oh yeah, Victoria Newman, which they did. They revealed this in the finale of last episode. But it's like right away they find out. Uh, they find out that oh she's the head popper, right? And that she's that she's working with Vought, right? It's like a, f a false flag kind of like you know psyop thing that Vault's uh, happening. So like yeah, Bully, uh, Huey, and Billy. Go rogue! They decide to they they hear about this weapon that could that uh, supposedly killed soldier soldier boy who's like the Captain America of the boys universe. Which you know, soldier boy in the comics was pathetic. Here, soldier boy who's played by Jensen Ackles from Supernatural. Apparently, the show creator of this show also created like Supernatural. So you would think I would have known that as somebody who was a huge Supernatural fan. <laughs> but I had no fucking idea. Then again, like, Eric Kripp looks a lot different from, like, you know, from, like, the Supernatural days. Um, but yeah, like, Soldier Boy is fucking bad, fucking awesome in the show. And what they did to him was criminal. I'm, I'm just gonna say that. Um, but yeah, so yeah, what happens is that you have this rift between the boys. Uh, Billy and Huey are going rogue. Uh, and they, you know, you have this thing where like, you know, the boys went to Russia to find Soldier Boy. Only uh, to find out what happened to Soldier Boy. Only to find out he's still alive 
and he got MK ultra by the fucking Russians, and that Vault's Vault and his former team Payback, which is like the Avengers of the boys universe, even though they have this fucking knockoff Wonder Twins uh, characters, even though that's fucking DC. Well, technically that's Wonder Twins is Hanna Barbera, but what? Uh, 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 that was just retarded, right? Yeah, because like. Uh, Mother's Milk had this like you know, uh, Mother's Milk's family was uh, part like a bunch of his family members were killed by Soldier Boy. He's like he's basically the Homelander uh, to like Mother's Milk, but like yeah, you have this whole huge rift because Billy and Huey teamed up with Soldier Boy, right? And like Starlight teams up with Mo Mother's M to take take down soldier boy right while like you know billy and the boy uh billy huey and soldier boy team up to take down homelander right uh you also have this subplot going on with uh, the deep which i don't give a fuck about really and like the whole the whole fucking thing with frenchie and kimiko where she lost her power she gets them back it's like really uh, they should have killed off like Frenchie. There's a point in the show where you think they're gonna kill off Frenchie and Kimiko, and they honestly should have, but they didn't, right? Yeah. So like, yeah, the um, yeah. So you have this thing where like uh, Billy and Huey are on Temp V, which is this like, um, which is like this new drug that Stan Edgar invented, had created. To sell to the military to give them superpowers as a way of kind of pushing out uh, the superheroes, right? Because uh, he wants to turn like Vault back into a pharmaceutical company, which gets him like you know, which uh, gets him kicked out by Home Banner, right? Uh, yeah, which was pretty cool because I I like the stand actor character, but like yeah, like come on, he needs to he needs to go. Honestly, because like Homelander is the main villain, right? Um, yeah. So what ends up happening is you know, soldier. The, you get the twist that Soldier Boy is actually the father of Homelander, which you know, in the comics they had gay sex, <laughs> so it was like, oh, that's super fucked up, and whatever. Which the Hero Gasm episode was probably the best episode. They they kind of. They kind of did um, Hero Gasm some justice, but not really, because Hero Gasm was much was a way bigger thing in the comics. Where here it's just like an orgy. Some people like it's like a small fucking thing that like the B listers uh, do, right? The B and D listers do, which is bullshit. But the epic fight in um, that's that uh, where like you know you have Soldier Boy souped up Billy and Huey fighting Homelander was awesome was an awesome fight best fight in the show and uh, to the point where it made the climax uh, kind of look crappy by comparison like the the climax of the show fucking sucked uh, it was such bullshit. That, okay, because there was this thing where, like, once Soldier Boy found out that he was uh, the father of Homelander, it took a lot of convincing for him to, like, turn on Homelander, right? Um, and then they, they made him the villain again, and it's like, what the fuck? That is fucking bullshit, man, where the, they had our characters turn on him. It's like, god damn it! Soldier Boy is way fucking better than like characters like Starlight, uh, Starlight, like uh, Kimiko, like, uh, like, like. Come on, man. Uh, that that's the that's the main problem with the boys TV show is that the villains in this show are way more fucking interesting and more more entertaining than the, the heroes, right? Which is probably why they're dragging this show out so often. Because, like, I... F dragging the, the show out. Because I thought... 
because before they announced oh, that there's going to be a season 4 of the boys, I thought this was going to be the series finale. Honestly, but then they then the season 4 got announced and I'm like, "Oh, great." They were probably like there there was an alternate ending where like apparently uh, Soldier Boy killed Homelander. So like if there wasn't a season 4, that pro this probably would have been the fucking ending. Which I fucking hate when shows do that. Just plan your fucking series out. Okay? And if they approve you for the next season, tell them to go fuck yourselves. This is the end. Right? Because that, that kind of bullshit ruined uh, Babylon 5. Which I was never a fan of Babylon 5. I, I watched... I honestly stopped watching after season 1. <laughs> which is funny because a lot of people... A lot of fans of Babylon 5... Tell people, hey, skip season one. <laughs> like, I actually like season one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they also um, killed. That's the problem with this show. They killed. Like, they fucking. Also, they also ruined. It's the thing where, like, I liked what they did with the Black Noir character. And they just ruined his arc. Because you had this thing where, like, oh, he ran away. He ran away. Gets this pep talk from the imaginary cartoon characters, right? Who reenact like his memories and shit, uh, from when like you know his team fought like payback. Sorry, his team payback fought Soldier Boy, and we got more of his backstory. Uh, and for him them to just have Homeland, they're killed. Black Noir was fucking bullshit, and you have. Uh, and the biggest fucking bl the 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 blame should honestly go to the fucking fake comic fans of the boys who spoil uh, the Black Noir spoiler lore is a clone of Homelander. You fucking retards are the reason why they ne they never d did that shit in the the show because you fucking retards are constantly fucking spoiling that shit everywhere. It's your fucking fault. Nobody else to blame but yourselves. Because we know that the show creators and the writers of the show are reactive, are reactive to, like, shit the fans say, right? So, yeah. It's your fucking fault. It fucking... And I kind of get, okay, why Black Noir need to die. But, like, we, we got cut out of a fucking confrontation between Black Noir and Soldier Boy. Yes, Black Noir had no fucking chance of against Soldier Boy, especially since we you know, they got they changed his origin story and you know, he's basically Ultimate Comics Nighthawk to the look at fucking Ultimate sorry, Ultimate Marvel Comics Nighthawk and don't tell tell don't Try to convince me that he's that Black Noir wasn't inspired by Nighthawk, because like, the, from the costume to him being black to like all the fucking knives and shit, like come on, he's like a straight up rip off of Nighthawk, except for this version of Night, the their version of Nighthawk is uh, batshit crazy, and is like a mute, which you know the Noir was a mute sometimes. <sighs> so yeah, they they fucking we got. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. So what did I think? Let's summarize. Um, it's by the way, it was really it was fucking bullshit that you you set up this heroic sacrifice where Mave Mave like almost like you know pushed. Uh, push Soldier Boy out of the Vaught Tower as he's about to explode. She somehow, s without because they 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 establish oh the the blast of Soldier Boy's like you know powers fries the V out of you know people's bloodstreams right. So she somehow survived jumping out of a tower uh, with Soldier Boy after and and the explosion that makes no fucking sense. Uh, Maeve should have fucking died, honestly. Starlight, I would have liked it if Starlight and Huey died. And now they're setting up all that, that Billy, because of the V shit, 
Kev V shit. He's dead in like tw 12 months or less. So, which uh, sucks, honestly. But, uh, yeah, see, season four of The Boys better be the last season. Because it's like, if not, it's bullshit. Um, yeah, so if I were to give this show a rating... It's fucking, it's fucking hard, man. Because, like, it, it's fucking hard. Because, like, a lot of people are going to be turned off by a lot of the woke shit in the show. That gets saved, that only gets saved because... Of the shit that's going on with Billy, Huey, and Soldier Boy, only for like them to turn Soldier Boy into a villain, because oh he hit Ryan when Ryan tried to kill him. <laughs> so it's like, oh my god, which they're setting up Ryan to be a villain too, which is fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If I would say six, uh, it's a six out of ten. Uh, I'm. It's an improvement from season two, but like, yeah, it's just like half, more than half the characters of the show suck. It's only watchable because of the villains and Billy, which they're going to kill Billy off and they're going to eventually kill Homelander. So it's like, you're going to keep watching the show for Huey and Starlight? Fuck that. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for this uh, podcast, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed I'm going to have a rough fucking time coming up with timestamps because I fucking, uh, this podcast was so fucking random. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, I had a lot of fun uh, doing this and hopefully we do more of this in the future. Alright, bye.